I'm James Turk. I'm a director of the Gold Money Foundation. I'm here today with Sean Filer, who's a managing member of a very successful New York hedge fund called Equinox Partners. And Sean is also the chairman of the American Principles Project, which I'd like to discuss today. Sean, thanks you for joining me today. I'd like to talk to you about the American Principles Project, you know, how it came about, um, your role as chairman, and you know, what the American Principles Project is aiming to do. Okay. Uh, well, the American Principles Project was founded by Robbie George, uh, this is back in 2009, and started with social issues, started with uh, Preserve Innocence Project, um, protecting our uh, youth um, from um, bizarre social teaching in the schools, um, as well as uh, Hispanic outreach. Who Hispanics are natural conservatives, but vote um, largely as Democrats. And trying to address those two issues, I saw the success of the, of the model and looked to create a parallel institution to um, take uh, economic principles and apply them uh, to the political process in the same way. And as a result of conversations that I had uh, with Robbie and Luis back in the fall of 2009, we decided to, to merge the efforts instead of uh, have me create a parallel effort. And um, the logic of, of the organization is really pretty simple, is that <clears throat> there exists largely now in the academy or with public intellectuals a lot of the uh, heavy lifting um, that needed to be done to really um, take the values and principles that uh, America needs to recover um, um, uh, to the next level. I mean, really, to uh, a lot of that work's been solidified, and it just hasn't been applied to the political process. And so what we've done is instead of writing another report that you know, stays on the shelf somewhere, uh, we've taken reports that already exist or synthesized reports that already exist, and then go out and talk to uh, legislators and lawmakers and get them to see what they can, they can actually implement. And largely our work has been at the state level, not at the uh, federal level. Why is that? Uh, well, legislators everywhere are conservative, conservative in the literal sense, in that uh, they don't want to move too far. And certainly with economic issues, uh, this is particularly true in Congress. And so we've just seen uh, a body of legislators on both sides of uh, the aisle that are willing to, uh, in some cases, make um, positive changes, but so incremental um, that uh, with issues like uh, monetary reform, uh, we've just gotten far better traction at the state level. Um, and uh, smaller amounts of money um, and persistence uh, in combination with um, you know, the Tea Party uh, push from a year and a half ago. Uh, we took 23 uh, legislative chambers nationally. Uh, we have 29 governorships. This is the Republicans who are really taking the lead on these reform issues. Uh, there's just a, a riper opportunity to work at the state level than there is at the federal level. We still have, obviously, a Democratic president and a Democratic Senate. Okay, so the American Principles Project works hand in glove with the Tea Party groups around the country? We do. We've co-sponsored a number of events, um, debates, bus tours with the Tea Party activists in, in various states. We've been particularly active with the Tea Party in, in Iowa, uh, in South Carolina. Um, what is it that the American Principles Project is trying to accomplish on the monetary sphere? You know, can, is it a return to the gold standard? Is it something different? Uh, is it controlling spending? Uh, what, what, are, what are you aiming for? So we have a, a two-track approach. Um, at the federal level, we're trying to get Congress to introduce gold standard legislation. Um, at the state level, uh, we're trying to get states to reassert um, their constitutional role in monetary policy and so to um, make possible the use of gold and silver um, uh, in various states that are willing to take the necessary legislative steps. So with respect to the gold standard, uh, that has been a very um, um, difficult push, uh, even in just in terms of getting legislation introduced. Uh, whereas at the state level, we've had quite a bit of uh, successes. Um, a number of states are very frustrated with congressional inaction um, when it comes to uh, an out-of-control Fed or an unaccountable Fed. And a number of states have been very keen to take up their you know, Article One, Section 10 uh, ability to uh, make gold and silver uh, coin legal tender. And uh, we've been working with a number of states um, trying to figure out the best way uh, to do that. And uh, I think that, that 
uh, helps advance the uh, the work at the state level as well as then puts pressure back on Congress to take uh, some role or some leadership role uh, in monetary reform. So states first, then Congress eventually follows? They're related. And, and one of the problems with the state action, as we'll see in Utah and we'll see in South Carolina, uh, the key impediment to using gold and silver as final payment in America is the IRS interpretation of tax statute. So as states take all the steps that they need to take to make circulation of gold and silver as money possible, that federal impediment still uh, exists. And so... Um, you know, in an ideal world, um, you just go straight to the IRS and change the interpretation. But I think the strongest... So that the metals could be used, used. without tax consequences. Exactly. It's not the legal tender per se um, uh, of the U.S. dollar that makes the use of gold and silver practically impossible. It's the tax treatment. Um, so, but going to Congress and asking them to remove, um, you know, this tax status of gold and silver is kind of like going to Congress and asking them to implement the gold standard. It's just, it's a, it's a, a hard ask without political momentum. And so what's great about where we are with respect to the states right now is um, there's a lot of steps that they can take that are meaningful, move the ball forward, um, but at the other hand, don't uh, require such a gargantuan leap of faith on, the, on behalf of the lawmakers that they're unwilling to, to move. So it seems to be it's a very good combination. Are you involved in all of the state efforts? Uh, is the American Principles Project involved in all the state efforts? Uh, I mean, there are at least, uh, I guess, eight or ten states now that are looking at uh, or considering legislation uh, to reassert their rights uh, on the monetary s uh, sphere. We, we uh, on a $3 million budget, have you know, limited capabilities, and um, gold is not the only uh, policy we're pursuing. Um, what we tend to do is um, allocate resources to a state as um, the legislation gains some momentum or it looks like it's going to be introduced. And so uh, we wouldn't have known eight months ago or even six months ago that Utah was going to be the first to move. But when it became apparent, really um, based on, you know, local initiative, um, that this was going to happen and gain some traction and needed um, maybe some outside assistance, maybe some outside advice, maybe there was something we could bring to the table to make the legislation either better or more politically possible, and then we drop what we're doing elsewhere and, and go into that state. So just as we were very active in Utah going back three months, today we're very active in South Carolina.